Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Josh is severe weather. I'm a meteorologist in the Raleigh area, and we're going to talk some tropics here, Hurricane Lee and some other systems that we have to keep an eye on here in the Atlantic. And today is September 10th. It is officially the peak of Atlantic hurricane season, the midway point. Now, I do personally think that the second half of the season is going to end up a little quieter than the first half. A lot of that has to do with El Nino, and um, we're not going to really break that down for you today. But certainly, it's been a busy first half as we are on to our M Storm Margo, and it was an unnamed storm back in January. So technically, we've already had 14 named storms halfway through. It means we're pacing for 28, but I don't think we're going to get to that. I think we're going to end up in the high teens to maybe low 20s. Uh, my forecast at the beginning of the season was for 18 and you know that could be a little bit conservative but nobody wants to go out with the wildest forecast in the world and pray that it's right but anyway if you're on the east coast you need to stay alert um, for hurricane lee and the area i've circled in red has the likeliest potential impacts and a little bit still too soon to have an exact landfall forecast this is still close to a week away from potential landfall somewhere in eastern new england or atlantic canada or maybe even still a chance this tries to escape and turn away from the coast uh, but right now uh, you need to continue to watch we're not in panic mode by any stretch we still have six seven days before anything could make landfall but we have a storm that is poised to grow here in the next couple of days in a favorable environment of the atlantic and then speed up um, so certainly the size of the storm is something i'm going to be watching for you guys here real closely um, let's look at the overview here. This is Hurricane Lee, a Category 2 hurricane. It did weaken some over the last two days due to higher wind shear, but I do think we're going to see a re-strengthening trend beginning here today. We have Tropical Storm Margo as well here in the Central Atlantic. That is not going to be a threat to land, but it could be our next hurricane. And then the National Hurricane Center has two areas to watch uh, for potential development. There are low chances at this point, just a 30% development chance on this disturbance it is now invest al 97 i don't think that's a threat to land but the one behind it coming off of africa here in a few days i think we do need to keep an eye on as it looks like it may have some more longer term potential not going to develop in the next two days but next week it certainly has a chance of becoming what our next storm would be i think nigel here's a look at the wide view of the atlantic and you can see the gulf is quiet the caribbean is quiet and here are just the main two players on the map. Let me pull out my pen and circle them for you guys. Um, but you should know if you've been watching my videos what's going on here. And if you're here for the first time, welcome, of course. Um, this is Hurricane Lee, and it is to the northeast of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and the Leeward Islands. Not a direct threat to those. Uh, it is starting to slow down, and it is going to grow as it moves in this direction. Now, the good news for you in Florida and the southeast is that we are going to have this next trough in here and one behind it which are going to break down the ridge that's built into the north and west of this storm and allow it to make a right turn. Now, there's still question marks on where that happens and how quickly it happens, but it is going to happen. So if you're in this area of the United States, you don't need to panic at this point. It looks like it's turning away. Here's Bermuda, and we do need to keep an eye on things in Bermuda. Right now, the forecast track takes the system westerly and then turns it to the right and makes a hard right. And it doesn't look like it'll make that right right into Bermuda, but it could be close enough to the west to provide some tropical storm conditions, depending on how big Lee gets here. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on that in Bermuda, but I think the area we really need to watch is up in here. Um, the New England, even northeast coastline, and especially Atlantic Canada. Um, and that is going to be an impact for you guys here next weekend into maybe early the following Monday. Behind it, we now have growing tropical storm Margo, dealing with wind shear, but starting to finally um increase in size and looks like it'll strengthen the good news is that margo is not going to be a threat to land it may sit around in here for a while next week but it is not likely to turn back towards the united states so that is something i will be tracking for you guys here but very secondary to lee here's a look at the wider view of the atlantic this is the infrared image and you can see here this is growing hurricane lee this is tropical storm margo starting to flare up here now Here's the next disturbance, AL-97, and then the next one set to come off of Africa behind it. I don't think this one becomes a tropical storm. I do think the one behind it very well could, but it's got a while before it develops. And other than that, just a bit of a flare up here off of the Colombian and Panama coastline. Doesn't look like it's going to develop at this point. A little bit too much wind shear. And again, we're pretty quiet here across the Gulf of Mexico and the northwestern Caribbean, which you, you would expect with the amount of wind shear that you're dealing with. So here's a look at the Central Atlantic, Lee and Margo on the map in between, a little bit of a flare up, but nothing that should develop. 
and that's it. In between the two, there's enough space where these two are not going to be um, really doing any battle with each other. There's enough space between them as there's a weak area of high pressure. And um, Margo's starting to turn northward away from the wind shear produced by the outflow of Lee. So it's got a better chance of developing here. But again, it is a fish storm. So I'm going to talk about Lee for most of this video. And um, some interesting things have been happening in the last couple of days. The storm looked like it was poised to be a long tracked category five hurricane and then it hit some wind shear which models did not do a great job predicting uh as a result all of us thought that system would continue to grow and maybe get up over 160 miles per hour maybe even close to 180 and that did not happen so yes i was incorrect on that i think a lot of us were in the weather community but you know what storms of this size can be very fickle um, a small amount of wind shear and an eyewall replacement can lead to a lot of changes uh, just going to prove that you can look at all the models in the world, you can look at all the environment in the world and still get the forecast wrong. And all we can really do is just do our best with the data in front of us. So here's what we're dealing with with Lee today. Um, it went through an eyewall replacement cycle last night. Now pressures are beginning to drop and it still has some wind shear on the southwest side. You see we're still struggling to grow thunderstorms out here, but we are seeing some growth again. And I do think another intensification phase coming. So we may be on its way to being a major hurricane again by this afternoon and a strengthening hurricane by tonight. How strong it gets is still a little bit uncertain at this point. We're starting to see after sunrise here, some images of Lee. And what I will point out to you guys is that we do still have a cloud filled eye. We still have wind shear on the Southwest side, but we still have a pretty uh, intense area of winds and thunderstorms around the center and a storm that looks like it's finally gonna overcome wind shear and grow in size. The size of the storm to me is just as important as the intensity in the middle of it because that certainly determines how many more people may be impacted by at least tropical storm conditions. So the final track of the storm will obviously make a, a huge impact on who gets it the worst, but the size of it is gonna be very important as well. Basically, I want to keep that simple for you guys and just say that size matters, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, here's a look at a wind shear map, and the green is low wind shear, which is favorable for development. And um, I'm going to draw on the map here. Lee is right here. It's kind of in an area between red, unfavorable wind shear, and green, more favorable wind shear. I don't know what happened here with this, but I'm going to try to change the color for you guys and clear it up a little bit. Weird. Um, still learning Zoom here, but... Anyway, here is the circulation of Lee, and you can see it's kind of on the yellow line, so it's not really in an unfavorable area of wind shear, but it is in a moderate area of wind shear. And because of that, we're not seeing rapid intensification like we saw two days ago when it was in an area here of low wind shear. Now, as the system moves in this direction, we will see more favorable lower amounts of wind shear between the Bahamas and Bermuda, although we will see some cooler water temperatures as well as Lee comes up in this direction. So there is a window until it hits that cool water for the system to re-strengthen into a major hurricane and probably a Category 4. And in my opinion, I still think that this could end up overachieving and becoming a Category 5 for a small amount of time. Some of the hurricane models have shown that happening. Now, here's a look at flights that went into the storm overnight. This is from 3.45 in the morning. You can see that the surface pressure um, is starting to come back down, which is a sign of intensification. 960 millibars was a strong category two, then 957 was measured. But you see on here, the wind speeds were not past category two uh, near the center of the storm. The storm is growing, but it's not intensifying near the core. Now, the latest flight that went through Lee has found that the surface pressure has started dropping again, down to 951 millibars. So a nine millibar drop here since the middle of the night. The other thing I want to point out to you guys here, and let me pull out my pen, is that on the east side here, we do have stronger winds showing up that are pushing Category 3 strength. So I do think Lee is getting close to Category 3 strength early this morning and probably will be there by lunchtime today. This pressure is dropping, and that's what hurricane models have been showing happening. You can see those winds coming up here on the outer eye wall up to about 105 knots, which is 125 miles per hour. Um, so they're they're getting close, at least, to major hurricane strength. And more importantly, the trend is showing a deepening surface pressure, showing that what happened probably was that we had an eye wall replacement and wind shear, and both of those are pretty much winding down. So now we're in a spot where the storm is likely to re-strengthen. And the official Hurricane Center forecast has wind speeds to 120 miles per hour by Monday morning, 130 miles per hour by Monday night, Tuesday morning. And then we move out of this area of highest ocean heat content and start to slow down and take more of a right turn. 
So weakening is expected and the hurricane center has it as a category one now before it passes Bermuda here on Thursday. In my personal opinion, <clears throat> I could see how the storm ended up being stronger than their conservative forecast. They typically are conservative, just to be honest with you guys. But as we saw the last couple of days, uh, they were more aggressive and everybody was expecting aggressive strengthening that stopped it halted and then we had weakening so these storms uh, the intensity forecast on them is certainly still up for grabs. Um, but certainly we see an, an, the ability for the storm if if we do not see another eye wall replacement in the next two days to strengthen as it's going to be in low wind shear and in warm waters, <clears throat> excuse me. So right now our models show the system strengthening again, um, these are tropical models, these are more global models. And we are likely back up into the category three intensity later today and some models showing category four uh, by the time we get to Monday morning and Monday afternoon. Um, we are not seeing category five officially. Um, I still think there's a slight chance for that happening. I'm not saying that to try to sound better than them. I just have seen with storms and warm water this year uh, overachievement. And if wind shear drops off enough, I certainly think that's still a possibility. Either way, it's a powerful storm and it will be strengthening some more in the next couple of days. Uh, here's the ship's model, and it does show a 15% chance of rapid intensification, more than 30 miles per hour in the next day, 11% chance that in the next day and a half, we see strengthening of 50 miles per hour or more. We're up to 90 now. That would put us at 140. Um, and beyond that, getting to Category 5, it's not expecting enough intensification to Category 5. So we're probably looking at a 4 with a slight chance of it becoming a 5. Now, after we get to Wednesday, we do see relative humidities dropping off in the area um, around the eye. We see ocean heat content dropping. And we see water temperatures dropping off uh, in the wake of Hurricane Franklin by the time the system gets to the west of Bermuda. So it will weaken, and it may weaken pretty steadily here. The one thing, though, that we have to watch as it weakens is how fast the storm accelerates as a trough moves into the west and pulls it northward. Because a storm that's weakening but racing is not going to be... Um, lessening in size as much as a storm that's moving slowly and weakening like we've seen here in the last couple of days. Here's the model forecast track. We're all seeing the right turn happening here on Wednesday night and Thursday. We're all seeing the system going by west of Bermuda and curving well away from the east coast. And right now operational models are pointing to Nova Scotia, but that is still a week away. And the other thing too is that we see some timing differences on this turn. Um, the trend actually in the last couple of runs has been back to the west for all the ensemble means. So the average of every ensemble brings it back towards Nova Scotia and says um, that this will likely affect land. Um, whether or not it hits is still a little bit uncertain. If you look at the GFS ensembles, though, you can see that that mean has actually shifted a little west. So this is the average of every ensemble member from the GFS, and that has landfall on the southwest coast of Nova Scotia. And that's pretty close to New Brunswick and eastern Maine. Uh, with several ensembles still threatening Cape Cod, at least with some indirect impacts on the west side of the storm. Um, we also have um, impacts potentially to Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland. Um, so we definitely um, do not need to let down our guard yet, just because the models are a little bit more to the right of New England at this point. It doesn't mean they can't shift back. We saw that with the Euro yesterday. Here's the potential for tropical storm force winds. And you can see Bermuda's got about a 40 to 50% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds, um, likely hurricane force winds in this area of red, but you can see there's still a chance from the European ensembles that we could have tropical storm conditions over eastern New England, especially down east Maine, especially across southern uh, New Brunswick, and definitely a big chance for damage across Nova Scotia and even Prince Edward Island and southwestern Newfoundland here. So um, this is taking an average of all the ensembles. Um, the hurricane chances are not quite so high. Uh, but we do have a chance for hurricane conditions over Nova Scotia and any shift west of this, of course, can bring this back more towards New England. So we can't write that off yet. We still need to be watching very closely. Here's a look at the ensembles. You can see they're in pretty good agreement that the storm slows down. It turns back towards the left, but it doesn't continue that track towards the Bahamas. It just makes a temporary turn back before we start to see a recurve happening here on um, Thursday evening, the fort, or actually Wednesday evening, we start to see some ensembles beginning to turn right. So that turn is coming towards the middle of the second part of the week. But the big question mark is how quickly does the storm move after that turn? Because we have some solutions that have it well south of Bermuda still here on Friday morning. We have some solutions that are well past Bermuda and even racing up towards eastern Maine. 
on Friday morning with the earliest ensemble solution hitting Nova Scotia and moving through the Bay of Fundy on Friday afternoon, but most of the uh, ensemble guidance showing it northwest of Bermuda. So this is a huge spread. We see the track guidance is in relatively good, confident agreement with a few exceptions here that the system is making the turn, but the speed of that turn and how quickly it moves after that is still very much up for grabs. The earliest this could be impacting Atlanta, Canada and Eastern Maine would be Friday morning. The latest, as you'll see on here, wouldn't be until Saturday night or Sunday. So that is the one thing I'm watching for you guys here. It could be hitting in five or six days. It could be hitting in seven or eight. And again, there's still some uncertainty on that. We still do have a couple of outliers here that threaten parts of New England here and the East Coast. So we don't want to rule those out, even though they're outliers, although more than likely it's going to stay to the east of that region. Um, you can see the ensemble track confidence is very high here through the next three to four days, then drops to moderate in five to six days. And then that track is low. There's too much spread as we get past day five, six, and seven. So next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, ensemble confidence drops into the low category, but it is less than what you would expect to see as far as a typical amount of uncertainty six or seven days away. So at least there's some more confidence than what you might expect um, from a storm this far out. Let's take a look at the GFS model here and you can see um, ridge of high pressure in place to the north and then a trough moving into the eastern part of the US here on Wednesday will turn the system north because what happens is as that trough moves in, it breaks down the ridge of high pressure that this would steer around and it is attracted more to the trough than the ridge. We don't move into ridges, we move around them and into troughs. Uh, you can see that will turn the storm off to the north, but what happens is after this trough lifts away Thursday night and Friday morning, another ridge in Canada builds into the east and that provides us with at least some attraction back towards the east coast. Maybe not a permanent attraction, but Instead of this system being up in here where it gets picked up by the trough and accelerates northeast, what happens is it doesn't really make that connection because the trough lifts away so quickly due to the strength of this high pressure ridge. And because of that, the storm, while it is starting to pick up its forward speed, it doesn't just race away and make a turn away from land. It moves towards land. And that, of course, is a big concern we have in Canada, especially Nova Scotia here into Newfoundland. But this could still change. Um, we're not going to see Margo, though, making a lot of westward progress due to the strength of this ridge here. Um, the next system, by the way, coming off of Africa needs to be watched here next weekend. The GFS is starting to show development with that. Uh, I'm going to show you something that is a very low confidence forecast, but you need to be alerted to, at least on the East Coast, and that is that this could become Hurricane Nigel around the 20th. And um, the ZRZ run, by the way, I'm going to show you. And don't freak out. This is so far off in the distance, but... Um, the ZRZ run develops the system into a strong hurricane very close to where Lee is right now on the 20th, so 10 days from today, and then tracks that system through the southwest Atlantic and right up the eastern seaboard here on the 24th and 25th. So not next weekend, but the weekend following. Now, uh, what I will say about that is that it is still 14, 15 days away, and trying to share a model like this and saying that it's definitely going to happen is, in my opinion, not a very, um, it's a deceptive move. So this could certainly keep changing. Just keep an eye on it right now. Don't freak out. Don't panic. This is certainly going to change. But this looks like a track that we definitely don't want to see on the models. We want to see this continue to trend away at this point. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're looking at with the GFS. And I'll show you the latest run, by the way, here in just a little bit. Um, this, is, this is the 6Z run, and you can see it's still holding on to the idea that we have something that could at least threaten the mid-Atlantic coastline. But this run of the GFS kicks it away more quickly than the zero Z run, which basically takes it right in. So again, <laughs> this is going to change. Let's see, the models run four times a day. This is 14 days away. So this will change 72 times. All right, so let's not get too carried away with that. Let's look at the European model here. And uh, yesterday we had a bit of a hiccup in the run in that it went down to 910 millibars a very strong category five that reshaped the ridge and allowed um, this storm to move north and then try to curl back to the northwest, making landfall in Narragansett Bay. Now, the good news is that the European is not showing that this morning. Um, the run has corrected back to what the GFS is showing, and it's a weaker system down in here, category three or four hurricane, making the right turn. And then instead of bending back um, as the ridge builds in here, it's got enough of a weakness where that storm continues up towards Nova Scotia as a category one or two 
hurricane. Here's Margo. Here you can see on the European Nigel, uh, rather than being down in here, is more off to, in this direction, which we'll have to watch in Bermuda. So some very interesting things going on. The Canadian model, again, not the strongest tropical model, but keep an eye on the tracks here. It has a system making the right turn, passing Bermuda Friday morning, and then moving up in the southwestern Nova Scotia, which seems to be kind of an average of where the models have it. So my forecast right now says Nova Scotia, Bay of Fundy, Eastern Maine, all are going to be under the gun with this. And then we'll have a recurve towards Prince Edward Island and Western Newfoundland by Sunday night and Monday. Here's a look, by the way, at the Canadian. It takes Nigel this direction, not this direction, uh, more towards Margo, and just has a parade of storms here over the north central Atlantic by the 19th. Here's a look at Lee. You can see it's finishing up an eye wall replacement. Um, you can see the core starting to get better organized. It is poised to strengthen. The HAFS tropical model has the pressure dropping into the 920s and low 930s, which would be a higher end category four, and then weakening Wednesday night and Thursday as it passes west of Bermuda but still a very big storm in size. And you can see it's, it's showing this organization and a pretty well-defined eye here, a pretty well-structured storm by tomorrow night or by tonight into Monday morning. And you can see it's just growing in size here. The eye is growing. And then we start to see some dry air trying to get in on the south side here, allowing the storm to weaken as it gets into cooler water. But that's still a big storm. Even if it's weaker, it's still growing in size. In the Eastern Atlantic, I did mention we've got a... a Two areas to watch here. This is uh, Invest 97L, and here's our next wave coming off of Africa. This, of course, is Tropical Storm Margo up in here. And um, let's see if I can make this map or make this a little bit bigger for you guys to see. So, yeah, here's Margo up in here. This is 97L, and this is what I think will be 98L in a few days. It's not yet an organized system, but one that has bigger potential. And uh, as we take a look at Margo, you will see. Uh, despite the wind shear and the fact that the storm is growing on the northeast side, uh, it is starting to have a burst of intensification here. We're starting to see more thunderstorms towards the center. Here's a low-level center down in here. You see this little bit of a spin here. Here's where the thunderstorms are growing, kind of in the mid-level. So Margo is expected to strengthen here and will probably be a hurricane in 48 hours, which would be Tuesday morning, and then up to 85 miles per hour, hitting some cooler waters and then likely weakening after that. Um, so category two is kind of the ceiling at this point for Margo, and you can see that on the ships we're looking at just a category one storm and overall a turn to the right and heading north and then a little bit of uncertainty after that, um, depending on the strength of our ridge here. Uh, the ensembles are actually trending right, which is good news for us in the north central Atlantic. I don't think we have to worry about it. Um, and you can see no threat to Newfoundland and just over the open water. So Margo will be a fish storm here. Um, we're going to look at 97L. And it just doesn't look very impressive. You do see some thunderstorms blowing up in here. It's got a 30% chance of developing. These are the Cabo Verde Islands. Um, but when you look at the visible satellite, I'm going to show you why I don't think this actually develops. This is the Louisville Center here. You see the circulation right here? Here's all the thunderstorms in here. So this system is getting sheared from the eastern side here. And this strong wind shear, in my opinion, is going to be too much for this system to uh, become a named system. Um, could it become a depression? I think there's a super low chance. I think 30% honestly is a little bit too high of a development chance, uh, but you can see the ensembles are not looking, or the uh, models and the ensembles aren't looking too far off in the future on this system. And we've got one or two trying to show it developing, um, but I wanna give you guys a little bit of caution about that. So most of these keep it below tropical storm strength, only really one or two try to make it a hurricane. This HAFS trying to make it a category two. Let me show you why it's doing that. Here's the parent view, and you can see here's our low, low pressure center here. It's very weak, 1,011 millibars, then 1,008. What's actually happening is the HAFS is trying to think that that circulation develops, but really it's the next one that's developing. This is possible Nigel here, and it does have that becoming a tropical storm here by Thursday and Friday morning, and maybe a category one hurricane by early in the day Friday, but... It's not that system, it's the one behind it. So the HAFS tropical model is developing a different system than what that intensity forecast is picking up on. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. I usually don't work on Sundays, but with the tropics being so busy, I want you all to at least have an idea of what's coming. I do appreciate your time and your support. If you do want to consider becoming a member, it's $9.99 a month. Um, just It helps me grow my reach. Um, it'll give you the ability to interact with me more, get faster responses. 
And um, I just thank you for that support. Again, if you feel led, there's no pressure, of course. I know you may just be stopping by for the first or second time, uh, but I am a meteorologist and my goal is to help protect and help prepare folks for potentially the worst weather. I believe that's my calling and I believe that's my gift from God uh, as a Christian man here to serve the greater kingdom and the greater good of everybody by sharing uh, weather predictions, um, sharing my knowledge of this, being in the being in the field for over 20 years and my take and how it may differ from the National Hurricane Center and from other television meteorologists. Uh, but anyway, it's a gift from God and I thank God every day for giving me this blessing to be able to bless you all. And I just wanted to say that uh, as a Christian, I feel called to just share a verse every day. It's what I feel led to do. Uh, Romans 14, 11 says, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. And while God has given me this gift to bless you all with weather prediction, I think what really matters and what drives me the most is to confess God to you all um, that Jesus Christ is our savior and giving my account to God later on opens up the door for me to live eternally with Christ. He has forgiven me for my sins. I am repenting and I pray that you repent as well. It's not up to me to judge you and your beliefs. Some of you are probably now tuning me out because of that, but you know what? That's okay. I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please God because I truly believe that God uh, will send Jesus to come again and that we have that choice where we can accept Jesus as our savior or we can continue to live our worldly ways. And that's that. That's it. There's no future for us. So um, I will ha be happy to pray for you. Um, I would love it if you could pray for me as well. And I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday and we'll have a video again tomorrow morning. God bless you.